Uh, every Sunday morning has got to be a salvation message. I don't believe, I believe that's important, amen. I believe that salvation is a must, amen. You must be born again, amen. But uh, we, we need some help from God, amen. And uh, uh, as God's people, he said in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33 and verse 34, it's where we'll get our text this morning, and uh, it's been something on our heart for a few weeks, and uh, the Lord's been, we've been asking the Lord to help us to develop this, and uh, uh, he said, be not deceived. Now, I believe there are a lot of folks in deception today. The Lord said, be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God, I speak this to your shame. Father, we love you today. We thank you, God, for first loving us. I pray, Lord, that you'd be our helper as we stand here where no man can stand alone. Lord, speak to our hearts. Lord, use the word of God this morning to help us. Lord, direct our paths. And Lord, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We'll look here this morning at this thought on the power of influence. The power of influence. Amen. He said, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners, amen, and I believe that. As a matter of fact, since I've been saved, I've experienced that, amen, and uh, if you're not real careful, you'll get uh, uh, in a situation or in a place, amen, and boy, uh, the environment will begin to influence you and to affect you, and uh, boy, it'll, it'll affect your decision making, and uh, you doing the right thing, and boy, I've been there since I've been saved, uh, and the Holy Ghost checked me up and say, man, uh, uh, that's not the way you're supposed to talk, amen, that's not what you're supposed to be listening to, uh, uh, that's not what you're supposed to be watching, amen, uh, and I've been there since I got saved, amen, and uh, uh, can I say since I've been preaching, amen, uh, uh, we are flesh and boy we'll get ourselves uh, in a situation that's not good. Our young people need to know today is this one thing, uh, uh, you don't have to bow down to peer pressure, amen, and you don't have to fit in, amen, and you don't have to sin against God, amen, uh, to make everybody around you happy. You can still uh, do the right thing, amen, uh, no matter what everybody else around you is doing, uh, uh, you can still do what's right. Amen. Uh, you know, I've tried to tell my children, it don't make no difference how many other ones are, are that's your age just doing it. Amen. If it's against the word of God in this country, uh, to the truth, you don't have to do it. Amen. It don't matter if they are church going people. It don't matter if it's the Sunday school's children. It don't matter if it's the preacher's children. It don't matter who it is. Amen. Uh, just because everybody else is doing it don't mean you have to. Amen. Uh, we think about this for a moment. I wrote this down and I want you to think about it. You can't run with the wrong crowd, amen, uh, continually without doing the wrong thing, amen. I want to tell you the crowd uh, uh, that you put yourself in, the environment uh, that you surround yourself with, uh, it'll affect your behavior, amen. And I've seen it uh, many times. Uh, I've dealt with it in my own life, amen. It'll have you, you know what I found out? It'll have you doing things you never thought you'd do, amen. Uh, how many of you have ever did something you never thought you'd do, amen? I have. Amen. I've done things that, Brother Perry, I never thought of uh, uh, that I would do. Amen. Uh, but getting surrounded by the wrong crowd, I uh, uh, put myself in the wrong environment. And can I say this? It's not their fault, it's mine. Amen. I can't blame anybody else for my wrongdoings uh, and my sin but me. Amen. It's not anybody's place. Amen. Anybody's fault but my own. Amen. Uh, can I tell you somebody else's wrongdoing uh, does not give me the right to do wrong? Amen. Uh, now I tell you friend, in our day we try to justify our behavior uh, because of what somebody else did. Amen. Uh, you know what? We have an accountability uh, to the truth of the word of God uh, to do right regardless of what everybody else does. Amen. Uh, just because somebody mistreats me uh, don't give me the right to mistreat them. Amen. Uh, just because somebody else uh, don't do it the way I think they should do it uh, don't give me the right to do something wrong. Amen. Uh, now friend, we're going <laughs> to we're going to have to just smile this morning, amen, and be happy in Jesus. I know uh, what God spoke to my heart about, so we'll just preach, uh, and when we're done, we'll be done, amen. Uh, look what he said in Galatians, amen, uh, chapter number 6 and verse number 7. Uh, the Word of God says again there, uh, Brother Abner, he said in verse 7, uh, be not deceived, amen. There are a lot of folks in deception today. He said, God is not mocked. 
thought uh, for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. Amen. You can mark it down. Uh, we might get away with it as far as the church goes. Amen. I mean, we might pull, the, pull it over the preacher's eyes. Uh, uh, we might do it our own way. But you know what I found now? One thing is we won't ever escape the almighty uh, eye of God. Amen. Uh, that is able to see. Uh, he sees us when we're alone. Uh, he sees us when we're all by ourselves. He knows what we listen to. He knows what we watch. He knows what we do. Amen. And we one day going to get an account for it. I'm a firm believer that everything you put down in this life, you're going to pick it back up. Amen. Uh, you won't get away with it. Uh, you won't ever escape the judgment of God on it. Uh, the only amen thing is a repentant heart. Amen. Uh, that will help you in that matter. Think about this for a moment. Uh, turn, if you would, uh, over to Proverbs chapter number uh, 13. Amen. I want you to say, I want you to know something this morning. I wrote this down a long time ago. Somebody told me. I thought it was good, so I put it down in my Bible. Uh, you can't run with dogs and not get fleas. Amen. Uh, do you know what that tells me? Amen. Uh, just what 50, the first Corinthians 15 said, be not deceived. Amen. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Amen. Uh, you get around the wrong crowd too long, they'll rub off on you. Amen. I promise you, friend, you don't believe that. Uh, you turn your children loose with somebody uh, that's a rebel, amen. Uh, they hate God. They don't want nothing to do with him. i am tell you what, it won't be long. They won't want to come to church, amen. Uh, they won't want nothing to do with the Word of God. Uh, you get around somebody that don't like the preacher, guess what? Uh, you let them talk about the preacher long enough. Uh, the devil put something in your mind uh, and he'll get you going the contrary uh, to what the Word of God says. Uh, uh, you just listen long enough, amen. That devil will put you on the wrong trail, amen. He he said here in First in Proverbs 13, I believe it's in verse number 20, the Bible said, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Amen. I don't know about you, but that's what I want to be. Amen. I want to walk with wise men. Amen. Uh, those that's got a little wisdom. Amen. The Bible said if any man lack wisdom, uh, let him ask of God, which give it liberally and upbraid him not. Amen. He is able to give you wisdom. Amen. He said, but a companion of fools uh, uh, shall be destroyed. Amen. Uh, you know what God trusts? to tell us, amen, uh, that evil communications uh, corrupt good manners, amen. There is a power of influence in your life, amen. I have been influenced in a lot of ways, amen, negative, amen, uh, but I've also been influenced in some positive ways, amen. Uh, now that word influence means this, amen. Uh, that word influence means to have an effect on the character, the development, or the behavior of someone. Amen. You know what I found now? Uh, uh, it, things will influence you uh, and have an effect on your life sometimes without you even noticing it. Amen. Uh, you just don't believe me. Amen. Amen. Uh, you sit around watching television and a commercial come on and it's some music and you know what for you know it? It's going to lure you to sleep and it's deceptive and you'll sit there and listen to it and for long you'll start patting your feet to it and you know what it'll do? It'll start bringing back a lot of old memories of the old days. Uh, uh, that stuff will come back up and you, before you know it, amen, uh, you sitting in your living room on the recliner uh, but in your heart you at the bar stool, amen. I'm telling you, friend, that's the power of influence that we have in our day. Uh, we are influenced in a negative way uh, by the things that we see. Oh, Lot vexed his righteous soul in hearing and in seeing. Amen. So I know uh, there is a power to influence. Amen. It is very deceptive in its ways. Uh, uh, we'll find over there in Proverbs, we found that he said a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 2. I want you to turn with me. Amen. Uh, we'll get somewhere in a few moments. Amen. We ain't got to the good part yet. We might as well say amen. Why we can't. Amen. He said amen in 1 Timothy. Uh, we'll find chapter number 2. I believe it is. I want to find this verse. I don't want to mess it up. Amen. In chapter number 2 uh, I believe in 2 Timothy rather. Uh, chapter number 2 and verse number 16. Look what he said. Uh, the word of God. Amen. I'm glad God gave us a Bible. He said but shun profane and vain babbling for they will increase under more ungodliness. Amen. I believe that to be true. Amen. Uh, Brother Leopard, you get around a bunch of vain and profane talking. Amen. It won't be long. Amen. You'll be saying things uh, uh, you never thought you would say uh, uh, just to try to fit in. Amen. Uh, just to try to impress somebody. Uh, just to try to get the crowd going. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, that profane and vain babbling, it'll increase the more ungodliness. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, the Bible said 
out the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen. Uh, what's in that heart eventually will come out. Amen. Uh, but you think about this for a moment. Follow on with me. He said, uh, he said, in their word will eat as does the canker of whom Hamanaeus and Philetus who concerning the truth, listen to this, have erred, amen, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some, amen. That's what it'll do, amen. Uh, you go astray, go get uh, influenced by the power of influence, Brother Holt, them little children coming behind you. I'm telling you, friend, you've got some things there, uh, but those children running beside you, amen, they don't have the knowledge you got. And you'll overthrow their faith. Amen. Think about it, what he's saying. Uh, for a moment, in first, second Peter chapter number two. Uh, second Peter chapter number two and verse number two. Uh, the Bible said, And many shall follow their pronunciate ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. You know what I found out about that crowd, amen, that don't love God, and amen, they're doing it their way. It won't be long, amen. If you get around that crowd too often, amen, the truth will start being evil spoken of. I'm telling you what, they'll start saying those little things, amen, uh, the, to speak evil of the truth. You just take a stand for God and see, amen. Uh, you stand against their sin and see, amen, how long it takes them uh, to speak evil of the truth, amen. It won't take long, you know what? They won't just come out and say it, Miss Tracy. They'll, they'll put them little bitty in the window things, amen, just a little bit at a time uh, to try to turn your heart, amen. And then when they think they've got your heart turned, uh, then they'll drop the bomb on you, amen. I'm telling you that's the way that crowd works, amen. Uh, evil spoken of, we find, uh, uh, we find this crowd here and, and we find the power of influence, amen. Uh, it, it takes us and leads us astray. Uh, you can't play with fire without getting burned, amen. You play with fire long enough and it's going to burn you, amen. It's going to take you, amen. And it's going to hey, you know what I found out? Uh, I have no doubt this morning there's people on these pews here this morning, their bodies here, uh, but their hearts somewhere else, amen. Uh, because of the power of influence, amen. Of uh, the influence, amen, that this old world has, amen. Oh, my friend, can I say, first of all, uh, what about the social influence of the world, amen? I'm telling you, that social influence of the world, as we think about the world this morning and all that it has, Brother Ty, it has an influence on your life. Amen. It'll rob you. Amen. That old world, amen, is walking contrary to the way of God. Amen. Now you get around it long enough and it'll destroy you. Remember in 2 Timothy chapter number 4. Uh, turn over there with me for a moment. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter number 4. I'm talking about the, the power of influence. Amen. I'm telling you, church, this morning, uh, we'd better be on constant guard. Uh, we'd better be on constant guard of who we are. And what we stand for, amen, because I tell you, uh, the power of influence will take you and it'll, it'll drive you and it'll lead you uh, contrary to the Word of God, amen. It'll influence you in a direction, you know what? It'll change your way of thinking, amen. Uh, you know what? There's people that used to sit on these pews that don't no longer believe what they used to believe. You know why? Influence influence, amen. I'm telling you, I've heard them stand up and testify about what, how they love Jesus and what they stood for, and then two weeks later, they out the door, amen. They don't believe that anymore. Well, something changed, amen. I got news for you. The truth had never changed, amen. It won't ever change. Uh, I'm telling you, if it was right 10 years ago, it's still right today. Uh, there's something in your heart, amen, uh, that has changed, and you ought to get your heart fixed, amen, instead of trying to change the Word of God or trying to find you a scripture. Uh, we living in a generation, amen, uh, that just has notorious uh, for trying to find the scripture, amen, uh, to corrupt, amen, the scripture with, amen. Uh, can I tell you, you can grab one scripture out of the word of God and make it say anything, amen. Uh, but you know what you can't do? Uh, you can't let them all hang together, amen, and be mean as a junkyard dog, amen. I'm telling you what, we've got a bunch of babies, amen, uh, that's sitting around in the house of God. You know what, it don't always have to be my way, amen. Amen. You know what, brother? It's not my way or the highway. Amen. It don't always have to be my way. Amen. You know what? We've got a generation sitting on Baptist pews today. Well, if it ain't my way, amen, that's just the only way it's going to be. If it ain't that way, amen, we'll do something else. Amen. Amen. 
You know what I found out, amen? I just got news for you. That's going to drop the bomb on you, amen? Uh, but you'd be better off without that crowd than you would with them, amen? I'm telling you what, they will hinder and hurt and destroy the work of God, amen? Uh, because they're so fed up and full of themselves uh, uh, that they can't carry on for the glory of God. We ought to get to the business, amen, and realize, amen, that God, amen, is the author and finisher of faith. And we got to trust God, amen? Now think about this for a moment. Talking about the power of influence. I've been influenced before, amen. Can I tell you, I've been influenced by preachers in a negative way. Amen. Uh, you know what? I ain't here to fit the mold of any other preacher. Y'all can forget that, amen. I'm not filling in their modes, amen, and got to be like them and do it the way they did it, amen. I don't care what way they used to do it, amen. We'll follow God and do it the way God says. If it ain't good enough, we'll do something else, amen. I'm telling you, God has to be right, amen. It's not my feelings or yours. It's what God says. My feelings sometimes, amen, get in the way of doing the right thing. I'm talking about my own life. My feelings say, you know what? You know what? That's right. Amen. And then uh, I own the word of God and the Holy Ghost said, no, it ain't. <laughs> Amen. And the Holy Ghost, you know what? At that point, I had to make a decision. Am I going to side with me or the Holy Ghost? And every time I've sided with me, I went the wrong way. Amen. But every time I've sided with the Holy Ghost, uh, God got the victory. Amen. And he still his himself mighty and strong. Uh, and we got up and went on out of the situation. And God got glory out of it. Amen. And that's the only way he'll get glory. We think about that old social influence of the world. Uh, look what he said in verse number 10. For Demas had forsaken me, listen, having loved this present world. Amen. That old Demas, amen, you know what he did? There was a time that he walked with Paul. Amen. There was a time that he loved truth. Uh, there was a time that he wanted to do the right thing. Uh, but he was influenced uh, by the world. Amen. And hey, Brother Leffert, he had got somewhere and got attached to something, amen, uh, that drove him away from the truth, Brother Keith. And you know what? That's the power that influence has. You know what? If you could rewind a little bit, uh, Paul would have said, you know what? Uh, Demas is my right-hand man. Amen. Uh, Demas is in there with me. Amen. Everybody else is gone, but old Demas is still here. Amen. But then he got influenced. Amen. And that power of influence stole his heart away. And it went the way of the world. Amen. You remember what he said over in Luke. Amen. Uh, Luke's gospel chapter number 9 and verse number 61. I'm telling you, friend, the power of influence. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, we think about this a little while. It might change our mind about some things. Uh, he said here, and another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me, go, let me first go bid them farewell which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm telling you the power of influence. Amen. It'll draw your heart away. Uh, 1 John chapter number 2. Amen. I know they don't a lot of people talk about this verse anymore, uh, but it's still true. Amen. And it's still still in the heart of God's people. And it's still taking us out into the world. And it's still stealing our joy. Uh, but look what he said in chapter number 2 and verse number 15. You do believe this, don't you? He said, Love not the world. Uh, neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world uh, the love of the Father is not in him uh, for all that is in the world you hear what he said brother Ho, uh, for all that is in the world amen he said the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life uh, those three right there will take you down amen he said and the pride of life is not of the Father but of the world and the world passes away and lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever amen uh, the book of James chapter number 1 and verse number 21 amen I'm glad to know Amen. Uh, that I, I've got a warning, amen, about the power of influence. He said in verse number 27, period of religion and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit the followers and widows in their affliction, and listen, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Amen. Unspotted from the world. Amen. James 4 and 4. Look what he said. He said in James 4 and 4, ye adulterers and adulteress, know ye not how that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Amen. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Amen. That's what God said. Amen. Romans chapter 
chapter number 12. Uh, look what he said, Romans chapter number 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. What's the first word? Holy, amen. Uh, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, uh, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, uh, that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. You know what he said, Brother Holt? Uh, we've got to keep it ever before us, amen, and have our minds renewed, amen. Can I tell you, every day I get up, hey, i got to have my mind renewed. That old mind's got a way of wondering, amen. It's got a way of getting on the wrong track, amen. Uh, can I tell you, friend, uh, uh, now some of us ain't going to like this, amen, but we're going to say it anyway, amen. I tell you what the influence that we're dealing with in the world is that influence of entertainment, amen. I'm telling you, we want to be entertained, amen. Uh, we've even brought that mess down to the house of God. Do you know what? Uh, we're so busy and so used to being entertained, amen. Uh, we've programmed ourselves uh, uh, to these 30-minute TV shows uh, and how there the preacher go 45 minutes and my friend we come in here uh, we'll rush in here uh, sit down and we'll want to stay 20 minutes and get in the power and the presence of God and it ain't going to happen amen until our heart is surrendered enough uh, to know amen uh, there ain't no other place I'd rather be uh, down at the house of God letting God uh, work in my lives we won't ever be able to get in the presence of God Amen. Entertainment. You know what? That old world, you know what? It's amazing. They don't have no all-day preaching services no more, uh, but they all-day singings all over this land. Amen. I'm telling you what? We could throw a set of drums up here, uh, change the beat just a little bit, and we could entertain folks, uh, and they'd come down here, and you wouldn't have to worry about empty pews. Amen. Uh, you wouldn't have to worry about that set of pews over there. Uh, they'd be full. Amen. Because uh, folks likes to be entertained. Amen. And you know what? It's the way it is now. And the preacher, amen, if he ain't loud, amen, and jumping all over the place, oh, you know what? Truth is truth. I don't care how, what kind of way he's delivering it, amen. The Word of God's still right, and it's still true, and it'll do us good to listen to it, amen. Uh, you know what? I've heard some people loud. You can't even understand what they're saying. And you know what? The whole building will be shouting. And what they done said, you like, that ain't what my Bible says. Amen. Entertainment. Amen. Want to be entertained. Now I'm going to get us, amen. You know what? What about the, the social influence of the world having to do with entertainment? What about electronics? Come on now. You know what? Everything in our homes run by switches today but children. Now I'm telling you, you mark it down, amen. You know what? We've got electronics, amen, have killed the people of God. Now I'm telling you, friend, it was a day. social media has corrupted even the church in our day. Amen. We have so many Facebook wars and, and this and that going on. Now listen here now. I'm not preaching against Facebook, amen. Uh, amen. My wife's got one, amen. I don't have a problem with her having one. Uh, but you know what I'm telling you, friend? We better be real careful. Uh, the first time you put something on there, somebody wants, why are you judging? Why are you judging, amen? Well, I'm just saying what God said, amen? Uh, but you know what? And you can't deviate from that, amen? Uh, but before you know it, uh, Miss Tracy, everybody in the world's on that bandwagon. Why are you judging? Amen. I'm telling you, social uh, uh, media has corrupted the church. Amen. There's more fights at the Independent Baptist Church over what goes on on Facebook and what goes on on the, on, on the Internet. Amen. And, and all this. And I can't believe they sent that text. Amen. Uh, you know what? I want to tell you something. I'll be real careful uh, because when you hit the sin button, it's sin. Amen. And it's going to cause some trouble. Amen. In your life, you're going to say, well, I wish to God I'd have never did that. Amen. Amen, social media, amen, you know what? You know, I see people all the time I sit down in the house of God on Independent Baptist Church pews, I post stuff, amen, and says, I'm a Christian, amen, and then they'll go on there uh, the very next thing and got something on their half naked, amen, and everything else, and won't everybody believe they're a Christian. So, hey, I'm telling you, friend, electronics has killed the church, amen. That's just the way it is, amen. We got everything. You know what? We living in a day, God forbid, it better not ever happen here. Anybody will be told to sit down, amen. Uh, get up in, a, in the pulpit. Bring a Bible with you, amen. I'm not interested in your iPad, amen. Uh, when you get in the pulpit, if you're too lazy, amen, uh, to open the King James Bible, then stay seated, amen. I mean, it's crazy, Amen. Oh, you, what's going to happen when it dies on them? I hope, they, I hope I am in a meeting one day and it just dies on them. 
Amen. They ain't studied the Word of God. They don't know what it says. And you know what? They're going to be sitting there with that duh look on their face. Amen. Because they don't even know where to go from there. And how dare they wouldn't dare ask you for your Bible. They wouldn't even know where to turn. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, that's the day we're living in, though. I'm telling you, they put everything on the computer, and they got it there, and they bring it to the pulpit with them. Amen. And they're going to be sure they're scrolling along the lines, and they ain't going to miss nothing. Amen. I get out of the way, let God the Holy Ghost fill you, and get the unction of God and preach the truth. Amen. And you won't need that garbage. Amen. Amen. But fill the pulpit with it. Amen. That's where we're living at. I'm telling you what the dangers of it, amen. It is a dangerous thing, amen. Uh, because for you know it, amen, you got everybody in this world and in the church, amen, uh, uh, being a Facebook stalker, amen. And they, amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And you don't like it, don't be stalking everybody else's. Yeah. Amen. amen. Well, my problem is you preach against having it, amen, you know what everybody's got on it. Amen. Now listen, now it's going to kill this service, amen, but it's just the truth. You preach against it, but you'll stand up there and talk about what everybody done said on it. My question is, how did you know? Amen. If you knew you was looking somewhere, amen. And listen, listen, you can tell me what you don't got at home all day. But if you don't got it at home, then you go somewhere else and do it. Don't be preaching to me about it. Amen. I hear this people all the time, amen, blowing television out. They don't have one in their home, but they'll go to everybody else's house and sit down and watch it, amen. I'm telling you, friend, that is a double standard, amen. You can paint it any kind of way you want to, and it's still a double standard. Well, I ain't going to have it in my house, amen. Well, you sit down with your family and watch it at Thanksgiving dinner, amen. You might just be guilty, amen. That's just where we at. And that's why we got such a double standard. In our day, amen, we pick and choose what part of the Bible we're going to believe today. Amen. Amen. You know what I found out? We can't go picking and choosing. Amen. It has to all hang together. Amen. When you start picking and choosing, you know who you're going to favor? you always going to favor you. Amen. And I'm always going to favor me. Amen. But when we stand by the truth, amen, we let God be true and every man a liar. Amen, the dangers of entertainment, amen, the dangers, amen, of the social media, amen. I'm telling you what electronics has got us in our day. Amen, we, we, everything's got to be done in a hurry. I remember, amen, when I was growing up, we didn't even have cell phones. Amen, now every 12-year-old you know is walking around with one. Amen. I mean, every 12, what a business does a 12-year-old got with a cell phone? Now listen, there's more garbage, you can access more garbage on those cell phones, amen. And you letting a 12 year old turn loose with them, you got your head in the sand. Amen. Because they're going to get themselves in some trouble. Amen. It don't take but one time hitting the wrong button, buddy, and you gonna, they're going to find. You know what? They may do it innocent the first time. But that second time won't be innocent. You know what? They see something, they're going back. Amen. They're going back, brother. They done saw it. Now you know what? It's the influence. That's right. That's right. Go back. That's right. I'm telling you, friend, we better be real careful. We think, you know what, our children, we talked about it Wednesday night. They're not angels. They got an adversary just like we do. The same sin we're capable of committing, they are. Amen. And we better watch out. Well, my little Johnny would never do that. He would too. Amen. Uh, my little Ben would do it. Your little Johnny would do it. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, uh, we are capable of allowing that. Uh, amen. Amen. That, inter that entertainment, that electronic, amen. I'm telling you everywhere they go, I'm going to tell you. Now listen, I ain't, I'm not making light of situations, amen. Uh, but now you can turn on the TV during football season. I'm talking about the first part of it. And they got these high school kids out there. And they falling over with strokes, heat strokes and everything. You didn't hear about that when we was coming up, amen. You know why? Because we stayed out in the yard, amen. And we had to work. And we got used to the heat, amen. Now they stay in the house with them thumbs, amen. All over video games all day and they can't handle the heat, amen. And then when they get old enough to work, they ain't going to work either if it don't involve the thumbs, amen. They ain't going to go to work. You know why? A hard day's work would kill them, amen. I'm telling you, friend, we have raised a generation, amen, just like that. And I want to tell you what, you think welfare is bad now, you just wait another 20 years when this crowd gets up there that's 16 and 15 now. You know what? They don't know how to work. They don't even know how to take out the garbage, amen. And you know what? You better mark it down. If they don't even know how to take instruction from mom and daddy, they sure ain't going to do it from somebody on the job. I mean, they got a stack of W-2. You ever seen this crowd got a stack of W-2s that thick every year, amen? 
Amen. And some of them I know, amen, and they call themselves a preacher, amen. They can't even hold a job down, amen. I'm telling you, they've been a member of every. I'm telling you, friend, they run from job to job every two months. And I want to tell you what, and it's always somebody else's fault. It ain't never their fault. I lost my job because, well, he, amen, it ain't never, well, I lost my job because I was too lazy to be on time. I couldn't get out of bed at 5 o'clock to get there at 6, amen, and I had her three or four times. He told me don't come back. I wonder why that is. Amen. Then they want to get up and tell everybody else's kids how to work. Amen. I'm just telling you, friend, that's the way we're living right now. I'm telling you, friend, electronics, amen, has killed the church today. Everything's got to be done electronically, amen. I'm not, hey. I, my kids are, you know what, I don't mind. You're going to be misinterpreted. I told you to bring your ears. You're going to misinterpret, amen, if you say, I, I said it's, it's wicked and evil and wrong. I said, you better be real careful. Amen, not let them loose with it. Not turn them off by themselves and say, go have your way. Amen, can I tell you, they kids today get a hold of these video games, amen, teaching people how to murder. Now listen, I'm telling you, friend. I seen it acted out. I seen it a, a court document, amen, where two young men had been watching a, a Grand Theft Auto or something, playing it, amen, and where you just steal the car and run over a woman on the video screen, amen, and keep going and act like it never happened. Well, they was two young boys, amen, took it out in real life, stole the car, run a woman over, amen, and kept going like it never happened, amen. You know what? That could have been prevented, amen, and we wouldn't have told them that it's all right if we wouldn't have said, you know what? Well, that must be okay. I'm telling you, a 12-year-old, the Bible said a child left himself bring his to shame, amen. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, and you let them alone with it long enough, and they're going to get a hold of it. Amen. And then you'll be sitting there, I would never believe he'd have did that. I'm telling you, electronics, entertainment, amen, that's what we had in our churches, it's not the power of influence. Entertainment, amen. Then we got, you know what, Brother Hope, we got these ecumenical movements in our day, where we all join hands, and we can all get along. Listen, I can't get along with you if you don't believe the virgin birth. Amen? Amen. I can't get along with you, amen, if you don't believe salvation is by grace. Amen? Through faith. Amen? I can't go along with that crowd that says, it's all right, you be baptized in water. I'm just as saved as you are, and you're just as saved as me. Amen? You know what? But there's some people that can. They can pull it all together and say, you know what? We're going to forget the doctrine. Let me ask you something. What are you going to teach or preach if you forget doctrine? That's all that word of God is, is doctrine. Amen. And when you start cutting it out, well, I'm going to put the blindfolds on today. Amen. And you just live ever how you want to, and we ain't going to say nothing about it. Amen. You know, every now and then, you know what I found out? I made a knock a, a, a long time ago in preaching. Amen. Come in with a ship on, uh, on your shoulder, and we'll do our best to take it off. Amen. Before that service is over. Amen. I mean, we're going to do best to hit it one time at least before that service is over. Just so you know, amen, next time you come in here, leave your chip at home, amen, and come down here where we're going to have service, amen, and fellowship in the name of Jesus, amen. Don't come down here all mad and mean all the time. You know what? I have bad days too. Amen. Every now and then we all have bad days, amen, but every day, every day, I start questioning, amen, every now and then, every day. Every time I see you, you're mad. Man, get a life, amen. Enjoy Jesus a little while, amen. And, and sometimes I just want to say, get saved, amen. If you get saved, you change that for you, amen. I'm telling you, friend, I'm telling you what, the power, amen. But what about the satanic influence of the wicked one? Amen. Do you know what? You can mark it down. That devil is real. Amen. There is a satanic influence in our day. Amen. If you hadn't noticed, friend, there is a darkness about this generation coming up. Amen. That is gloom and doom. And I'm telling you, they'll dye their hair jet black. Amen. And they'll put piercings all over them. And you know what that is? Anytime in the Bible you find somebody cutting themselves, you know what it is? It's satanic influence. Amen. And this crowd today is full of it. And you know what? They'll paint their, you, you know what? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta not be thinking if you let your kids paint their room black. Amen. Amen. There's a darkness to that. People say, well, that don't mean, that. I'm telling you, Freya, there's a reason that room's black. That's right. That satanic influence has drawn them away. And if we ain't careful, we'll, we'll aid it. Can I tell you, Freya? If your child's always wanting to be by themselves, you got some problems. You need, to, you, need to, you need to check on them. You need to try to do something to point them in a direction, amen, that 
to get them out of that. Uh, you'd be surprised at the children. You hear them at school all the time, these bullies. and Before you know it, amen, depression, that's exactly right. That's the next place you're going. You talk about depression. These kids, all they ever hear, well, you fat and you ugly and you, you, you don't look good and you this and you that. And, and before long, they start believing that. Can I tell you, if that ever comes out of your child's mouth, you ought to correct it immediately. You not a, ought to allow it. Them to run around and talk about other kids, amen, and, and, and things. You ought not allow that. Amen. Amen. Because you know what? It might sound good to them, but it don't sound too good to that one's on the recipient end of that. Amen. Can I tell you, that's right. These children are precious. Amen. And you know what? We ought, not, we, ought not, we ought not put up with other children always running down. Other kids in this congregation and stuff. I mean, you know what? The sad thing of it is they get it from daddy and mama. Amen. The kids didn't start it. Mom and daddy started it. Amen. Death. Amen. What about that? Have you seen the suicide rate in our day? I'm talking about young teens. Don't see nothing worth living for anymore. You know why? That satanic influence. Mm. We go on. Amen. What about that seductive influence of a woman. Now, you go on and part right there for a little while. That mouth is smoother than oil. Now, let me tell you, you young boys, something. You older ones, too. <laughs> uh, it don't stop with the young boys. I mean, man's man, and flesh is flesh. And if you give her an ear, amen, long enough, she'll have your heart. Now, listen. Smoother than oil. Them old eyelids. They ever give me that eyelid? I'm gonna ask them what's in their eye. I'm gonna just tell you. <laughs> Amen. I'm gonna wonder what's in your eye. Amen. You ain't got no business flattering your eyes and winking at me. Amen. I'll tell you in a minute. You need to get that out of your eye. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm just telling you tonight, friend. I'm telling you now. I'm, I'm just being serious with you. That seductive influence of a woman. Now, there have been a lot of good young men stowed out of the house of God by a woman. Amen. You think about what's seductive, preacher. What's seductive, amen? Listen, the fascinating magnetic pull that someone or something has, an attractive quality that tempts you in some way, something that catches your eye and won't let it go. To draw aside, Brother Ty, to entice, to lead astray. That's what, hey, I ain't against women. I got a wife, I got a mom, and I got a daughter. Amen. But I'm just telling you what that Bible says. They have a seductive influence upon a man. I tell you what, a woman can, you know what? I, I just tell you, my wife, there's certain ways that she looks and I know what she's thinking. Amen. And you get around there, some of them women, hey amen, I've seen it. Some of them women, they'll give them that old look. <laughs> and then he'll sit there and he won't say nothing. And he'll give them that yes, dear. I'm like, be a man. Amen. Be a man. Take rule of your house. Amen. Take control. Because if you don't, one day you're going to regret it. Can I tell you, if they, if they already doing it when they're 18, it ain't going to get any easier when they're 28. Now, that's right. When they fall, yeah. I'm going to tell you, it ain't going to get any easier the older they get. Uh, you say, well, at about a year of marriage, she'll come down. She ain't going to come down. Amen. I'm telling you what, if she's pitching a raging fit right now, she'll be pitching one worse. Amen. Down the road. Amen. And in closing, can I say, can I tell you back up just a minute? Stay out of the danger zone. Don't put yourself in that place. Amen. Don't put yourself in the bullseye. Friend. I'm telling you, if you put yourself in the danger zone, you're going to get shot. Amen. Uh, what about this? Amen. And cut the spiritual influence of the word. Now, we could do away with all that other stuff if we just have the spiritual influence of the word of God. What did he say in Psalm 192? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Can I tell you, brother, all these other influences that we face in a daily living can be done away with. The only combat we have for that is the word of God. And you know what? The Spirit, well, the Spirit of God told me to do it. He ain't never told you to do anything contrary to the word of God. Can I tell you, the Spirit of God has never told you to leave your wife. You might well say amen. The Spirit of God has never told you to leave your husband. Amen. Amen. That's Christ. Well, just follow your heart. Amen. Don't ever tell my kids that. Amen. I'm telling you, your heart will get you in trouble with God. 
Now, spiritual influence of the Word of God. What influence are you influenced by this morning? What, what power of influence do you have? Is it that old social influence of the world? Is it that satanic influence of the wicked one? He's there. I tell you what, there's more demonic activity in our day, amen, than you would want to believe. People say, well, that ain't so. There ain't no truth to that. I'm telling you, friend, you ain't got your eyes open if you can't see the demonic influence of our day. Amen. It is real. What about that suck, seductive influence? We'll get somebody to come play this morning. You may need to pray. You think about the power of influence. 